to be traumatized is to be overwhelmed and be unable to cope with an event that you've experienced. It could be a disaster, human-made or natural, or it could be the result of interpersonal victimization at the hands of an adult who takes advantage of a child. And children are particularly likely to be traumatized because they don't have the cognitive or the emotional capacity to comprehend or manage what's happening to them. If a child has been traumatized in some way, physically, sexually, if somebody asks about it or notices the child behaving in a way that differs from how they typically behave, or the child actually in some way discloses it and the child is believed and the trauma stops, the victimization stops, what the research shows is that that goes a long way towards minimizing the long-term effects. The problem for many of the clients that I work with is that the people who who should have known either were the ones doing the traumatizing or ignored the signs that were there. Trauma really is in the eyes of the beholder, the one who's experienced it. So if, for example, you lose your mother, you've been very close to her, if people around didn't recognize the depth of her grief, if she didn't have a way of processing it or expressing it, that would intensify the traumatic effects of the death of a loved one. Helping professionals assume that certain things are inevitably traumatic and certain other things aren't. The loss of a mother in the eyes of many helping professionals would not be the sort of thing that they would assume would lead to a traumatic response. The symptoms are unique to the person because the person's interpretation of the event is unique to them. Anxiety would be very common among adult survivors. Nightmares and dreams, very common. That's one set of symptoms. Psychiatric problems like depression, bipolar, borderline personality disorder, dissociation, those would all be symptoms that would be associated with survivors. Another set of symptoms would be somatic. There's been quite a bit of research that has looked at the relationship between chronic unexplained pain and sexual abuse, for example. Another set of symptoms is cognitive. People who've been traumatized in childhood tend not to trust others, and so they view the world as being unsafe. They view other people as being unsafe. They view themselves as being untrustworthy, and they view others as being untrustworthy. So the the world is a place that's very scary. homelessness and poverty are very much linked to trauma, not necessarily because trauma is more likely to occur in low-income communities, because it's not actually, but because the belief of the trauma survivor is self-sabotaging. They don't believe they're going to be able to be successful at anything, therefore they aren't successful at anything. Incarceration is often a more direct link. For women, it's often about drug abuse and addiction. Drug abuse and addiction are much more common amongst survivors of trauma. So you abuse substances, therefore you're more likely to be incarcerated. As a woman, you prostitute yourself, you're more likely to be incarcerated. So there is a pretty direct link. Where I think the criminal justice system can go wrong and does go wrong is that it doesn't operate from what I refer to as a trauma-sensitive focus. It operates from a criminal justice orientation. Nobody asks why so many women get arrested and incarcerated for addiction and prostitution. If you asked, you would find that the overwhelming majority of those women are survivors. While they are incarcerated, that becomes the perfect opportunity to offer them services to begin to work on what ultimately led them down the path, for example, to addiction and prostitution.
trauma survivors are seen in criminal justice settings, in addiction settings, in public mental health settings, that's where these folks are seen. The real front line of trauma work occurs in those settings, not in the specialized field of trauma therapy, sitting in an office or laying on a sofa with a therapist for 60 minutes. If you don't deal with the underlying problem, then you're going to be dealing over and over with the adult consequences like addiction and incarceration. I think trauma is missed for a couple reasons. There are a lot of people going through training programs in psychology, social work, etc., who aren't taught about it. So they don't know what to look for. So some of it is a lack of training. Equally, if not more important, is that people don't want to ask because they don't want the answer. People move from being victim to survivor, not when you strip away their defenses, but when you slowly introduce their feelings to them in a way that feels manageable and not scary. It's very important, first and foremost, for people to get clean, because unless you're clean and sober, the only thing you're focused on is your addiction. As underlying reasons why they were using in the first place start to surface, there has to be supportive counseling available to them. If people feel empowered over their addiction, they start to feel empowered over what led to the addiction in the first place. And so I think that it's really a two-pronged approach. One is the addiction and the other is what led to the addiction. And you really need both.